Hi, uh, my name is Jess. To give you a little bit of background on my life, um, my father, his side of his family was mostly Freemasons and Evangelicals, or however you want to pronounce that. And on my mother's side was mostly priests and nuns and religious teachers of sorts. And uh, this is me going over the Bible for the first time. Uh, I'm going to be doing chapters 1, 2, and possibly 3 of Genesis and giving my own personal interpretations through the energy created on both sides of my family to try and like describe it a little bit better. Maybe not from like a perspective so much from the Bible, but maybe more of a perspective from the new inner workings of the thoughts of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't necessarily say that I have anything to do with Jesus Christ, but a lot of my life I have been told to believe and to feel and just flow with everything and to make my own decisions as to what's what and what to believe. Um, pretty much what I could say I do believe in is that both of my parents were miraculously birthed by both of their mothers, but at the same time, my father never knew his father and my mom. Her father was always all around the place, like, he had a very important job with General Electric, and, uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to start to read Genesis. Um, chapter 1, the creation of the solar system, 20, creation of animal life, 26, the creation of man, 29, the appointment of food. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I could believe in such a statement. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Actually, that strikes me in a core of that, like, you know, I never really, you know, thought, you know, would be able to describe just properly, you know. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. I love how God's not referred to as any sort of gender yet. I find that very soothing in a lot of ways because the first paragraph of the Holy Bible, you know, in Genesis at least, has not referred to a gender yet. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Okay, well. That makes a lot of sense because we need to have this dualistic perspective of light and dark, yin and yang, and in like a sense, you know, like if there was no shadows, there would be nothing that the light has casted on to like make it matter, you know. Um, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and in the morning were the first day. And the morning were the first day. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense if, you know, you were to create something like that. It would have to kind of be separate from one another. So there would have to be an aspect of night and day. I, I still love so far that God has not been referred to as a male or a female. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. That kind of, I don't really understand it all too well right now, but maybe I can like reread the passage to myself and grab a different understanding, so I'm going to try that. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, so now that I read it again, um, I think it's talking more about Lamas than anything else, and uh... That makes a lot of sense, you know, like, there'd have to be, like, some sort of thing with the water for anything to really happen. So that makes a lot of sense. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. I don't necessarily know what firmament means. I'd look up the definition right now, but... I don't really want to get, like, this video way too long in itself. I mean, it would definitely probably add to it. So, I'm going to look up for a minute.
The heavens or the sky. Okay, so let me reread that passage where it says, and God made <coughs> the permanent. So, the heavens or the sky being separate from earth. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And God called the firmament heaven. So, he they called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Yo, yeah? No Not really, thank you though. Yeah, I'm kind of busy, uh, but, you know, nobody ever cares about that. But, um, and God said, let the waters in the heaven be gathered together unto one. All right, I'll see you, the, see you later. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Okay, so, and God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called the he seas. Okay, so this is the first time that anything's referred to as he or she. Um, it's where it says, And God called the dry land earth, okay, and the gathering together of the waters called he sees. So, he sees? Okay. And God, God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and her yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Okay, so now, you know, he decided he sees, and then after his kind. So, something about being able to, like, see is what created the he sees. whose seed in, is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And in the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be four signs, and four seasons, and four days, and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So now it's talking after creating the plants. And then there was this aspect of time and seasons, in a sense. What I see that as is, you know, like, when you're going to have, like, trees and plants, like, living on this earth, like, they're probably going to feel, like, the different seasons and the different temperate climates from, like, light time to dark time, which makes a lot of sense, and then they would start to feel out like, oh, this is what a season is, this is what this is, this is what my leaves fall. Um, I don't necessarily know why they would describe it as he. I can't necessarily say I am against it or for it. I'm only going to read chapter 1 of Genesis because I don't know if I have enough time for it all today. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. Okay, that's another thing where it, it you know, it makes sense, you know, that, like, the greater light is the sun, because it does brighten everything a lot brighter than the moon does. He made the stars also. It says after that, though, he made the stars also. But it doesn't say anything about the moon, which is interesting. Maybe farther in Genesis, it does talk about the moon and the creation of the moon and whatnot. That's one thing that, you know, there's a lot about the sun, but there's not a lot about the moon. 
Well, like, you know, the Son of God, I see him more as, like, you know, the Son of God, like, the projection of God. Um, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and, he, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Okay. He, he decided that to have this dualistic perspective of, like, night and day was a good thing. I, I agree, too. Like, I couldn't really see it any other way, so you know what I mean? Um, I just want to make sure that I'm not, like, lost. And, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so the fourth day, the evening, and the morning were created. Um, I always see, like, the morning as, like, morning, like, crying, or, like, morning. <coughs> and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth and open from it of heaven. I'm going to be sharing the reading of this. So then it says that God said, let the waters spring forth abundantly, and moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth to open up permanent of heaven. I don't know exactly what that could mean. I don't really understand that passage too well. It could either be because I am human, or because it doesn't make too much sense to begin with, or, you know, it could be a bunch of different things. Um, and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So here it kind of seems like it describes creating like aquatic life and creating other forms of life before human, which is funny because it always seemed like it was opposite. Like everybody always seemed to like describe it like it was opposite, like he made man or man before he made human per se. I mean, or, you know, animals. I don't know why I did that. I'm horrible, I'm tired and stuff, you know, but, um, and God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth, and the evening and the morning were the fourth, fifth day. Okay, so, on the fifth day, it seemed he created, uh, animal life, which is cool. That's really awesome that, like, he created animals before us, you know? Or, he, I don't know, like, what he is, you know? Because it's like, what the fuck is she then? Like, if he's so much greater than she, like, I don't, I never truly understood that. Um, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. I don't necessarily know what that means. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, the creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth, creepeth among the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So it seems to talk about I can't say that this is necessarily certain, but it seems to talk about other animals eating other animals and other, like, the cycle of life and the circle of life and, you know, like, I like that insects get eaten by the fish and the fish get eaten by the bear and the bear, you know, like, eventually, like, dies and has babies and then those babies, like, go to, like, the, you know, like, that whole thing. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And it's interesting how it says, like, and God said, let us make man in our image. It's kind of interesting, because it's like, who was God talking to? Was he talking to the animals that let's make man in our image? Like, was he talking to the animals as to what the animals wish to portray as man, 
but that's the part that always confused me. After our likeness and set them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth among the earth. Okay, so pretty much it's saying here that like man has every right to do whatever they feel to this planet. That's kind of messed up. I don't like that at all. That's all sorts of messed up, and I don't know why anybody would ever write such a thing. And think that they could get away with it 2,000 years later, you know? I don't think that that's a true word of God. At all. At all. So God created man in his own image. Which is interesting to think of, because if God created man in his own image, but before he was saying... Uh, up here where it says, let us make man in our image, but now it's saying that it made it in his own image. So if it went from having this dualistic perspective of our image to his own image, how and why did that happen? Like where and how do people read that passage to that passage without being like, what's up with that? You know? And, uh, in the image of God, he created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Okay, so here it's saying that God created man in his image, and that created he, him. You know, him, he, over there, you know, like that guy. And uh, then it says, male and female created he, them. So, he's saying or whatever, whoever wrote this is saying that man was created first, and then females came into the picture, and then it was he and them. So, females were referred to them, and he was referred to he. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay, so it kind of like repeats itself, like in the, the same kind of passage, saying, you know, like, you have controls of everything that's on this earth, you know, like, you do whatever you feel. And, uh, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree and in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me okay so pretty much he's saying here like you could eat meat you can eat animals even though he said that he blessed and loved every animal and he created the animals first he then created something and through either how I would consider it through an evolutionary chain and then you know he like when people get a voice in the back of their head, Oh I could eat this like it just tried to attack me and then it killed it. Um and then God said, Behold, I have given you every herb, blah blah I should be for me. And ev and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth among the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. Okay, so it's saying here that vegetables, I think, in itself, are saying that, like, the, they were created for man to eat meat and for those animals to be eaten by us. Which is fucked up, disgusting, like... You really want to eat a lion? Like, do you really want to eat, like, any animal ever? Like, have you ever spent time with a pig or a cow or anything? I really haven't. I can't say that I truly have either. I haven't spent time outside of Connecticut, like, more than a month of my life. All of it. And, yeah. <coughs> Cigarettes are evil.
and to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth among the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me. And it was so. Okay. I already read that, but, you know, whatever. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay. I'm going to end this here. So on the sixth day, animals were allowed to eat each other. So that's like, I can see that's where like the 666 thing comes from. Because, like, that's pretty evil. That's pretty evil. Like, it, like oh, it's okay to eat meat. It's in our Bible. You know? And I eat meat. It's disgusting. And I really don't like it. But what if that was Jesus' secret? Like, he never ate meat. Oh. Like, I don't know. I've never read anything about Jesus eating meat or not eating meat. So I couldn't say for sure. But, maybe I should look up online, like, was Jesus a vegetarian? Like, but, I'm gonna stop this here, I'm gonna upload this, and that's about it. Ooh, rock and roll.